So I'm here at work, and I was just listening to the audiobook of Shards of Honor on the way over here, and um, it's getting real scary, like, it's like, like um, real adult fear scary, like, sexual assault threat scary, and I'm still holding out hope that like, oh, she thinks she's gonna get raped, but something else is gonna happen instead, but I'm just extremely worried. And I had this thought that maybe I didn't like sexual assault stories before. Not just like, obviously I don't like when sexual assault happens in stories, but like from a narrative perspective, it's like, you know, why do you need to have the threat of that in there? And I think the difference is when it's written by women. And um, I don't think it's re ever really well done when men try and write like a, a woman is, you know, there's a danger of her getting raped or something, and it it's always just handled wrong, I think. So maybe the difference here is that this is being written by a woman, but we'll see. Oh, also, um, there's been no other female characters so far. I think there was one on Cordelia's crew, but she's with a different crew now and they're all male. So... I would really love for the story to pass the Bechdel test, but mid-80s, maybe not. We can't have nice things, I guess. That's where I'm at with Shards of Honor. I hope that there's not just, like, pining for most of the story and then she meets back up with Farkos again at the end because I do want to see more of where their relationship is going because I feel like we really only got hints in the first third. I did like them together. I thought they were super cute, but it feels a bit insta-lovey, so I want their relationship to develop more before they actually, like, literally get married. So that's where I'm at. We'll hopefully be updating throughout the day. Why does this audiobook have a male narrator? It's got a main female character, and it was written by a woman, and this guy isn't even doing character voices, so I literally don't know why he was hired. He's not even that good. And I'm really not looking forward to hearing him, like, narrate a rape scene. So... Ooh, gosh, I, I, I think that even when a book is written by a guy, if there's a female character, the producers should really heavily consider giving it a female narrator. Um, don't get me wrong, like, I love Tim Curry and Stephen Briggs doing, like, Sabrielle and the Tiffany Aching books, but it would be even cooler to hear that those stories read by women, because then you get more of a female voice in there, but... Shots of Honor is a gift. Honestly, it's uh, it's doing everything I want it to do. Like, all the things I've complained about get resolved in a really good way. And the near rape scene was super scary, but also it was kind of dealt with. I mean, I would have liked to see more thought going into how Cordelia deals with the psychological aspects of it, and I wanted uh, Vorkosigan to, like, care for her more, but that might be the Hurt Comfort fan in me talking. I love Cordelia so much. She's really great, and her relationship with uh, Vorkosigan just keeps getting better and better, and they do keep meeting, and it's really great. The war, I didn't want it to be a war story, and so the war wrapped up right away. I wanted her to talk to more women, and that happened. It's been a joy and a delight. I haven't read a lot of romance, so I don't know how standard this is, and the romance is kind of in the background of Shards of Honor, but I'm so proud of Captain Cordelia Naismith, because she gets it, girl, get it. She's not overly sexual, but like, she knows what she wants, and she's not ashamed of it, and she's, she's like 33 years old, she knows what she wants, and I'm so proud of her. She's not ashamed at all. Uh, oh, she's great. Wow, amazing, flawless. So Cordelia is trying to avoid these therapists who want to talk to her about what happened. And uh, I'm like, oh no, she's gonna go through the whole like, I don't need a therapy thing. But then one of the doctors gets her to talk and she talks about it. And I'm like, wow, thank you, Lois. Who oh boy. Okay, so. Uh, I had this suspicion before, but it just basically got confirmed that Vorkosigan and the guy who tried to rape Cordelia were a thing for a while, and Cordelia just called it a strange phase. 
Now, I don't know if she means like, oh, strange that he was spy phase. I hope she means strange that he was into this awful man phase, but I don't know. We'll see where that goes. <laughs> if we're close against by though, that's that's pretty dope. So I'm stuck in traffic and I'm listening to the Shards of Honor, Honor audiobook, and there's this one thing that's really bothering me about the story that I think is kind of unforgivable, and it doesn't ruin the whole book for me, but it is a really negative aspect in that there's this one character who has schizophrenia and possibly some other mental illnesses and he is a rapist and Cordelia the main character keeps being like oh man he's mentally ill and I feel so bad for him but yet he's done all these like reprehensible things and now he's working for the family and what is going on here um it's just wild. I'm here at the Family Lakefront property, and it was quite a drive up here, so I was listening to Shards of Honor on the way, and I finished it. And I couldn't quite get a grasp on the plotting in the last, like, third of the book, because it was kind of divided up into sections, and the last third, the action just kind of petered out, and it turned into more political stuff. So that was a little disappointing. Uh, I was happy with how the relationship between Verkosigan and Cordelia turned out. Some unexpected political things happened, which I'm sure I will talk about later. And then that aftermath chapter, like the epilogue, that was cool to see. That kind of reminded me of the new Becky Chambers book. Um, I wonder if she got inspiration from that. So I'll do a more thorough, in-depth thing later, but I just wanted to say that I finished it. I would say, like, four stars. The lighting is really good right now. Thanks, smoke, I guess. I'm in my backyard because, well, it's hot. So I finished Shards of Honor a few weeks ago, and having some time to think about it, I think I liked it more in the moment than after, because I was really excited by the first half to two-thirds, because, you know, they were like, treks across a planet and spaceship battles happening and then the last third it just felt like all epilogue a little bit so that was disappointing because it felt really anticlimactic in that Cordelia deals with the fallout of coming home and then you know makes her way back to Miles on Barriar and while that was really cool to see we don't get to see um a soldier dealing with the fallout of war. I mean, Cordelia's not a soldier, but that's basically what happens, you know. She has to deal a lot with PTSD. And we also get to see that Beta isn't as unambiguously good as we might have thought, because we're seeing things from Cordelia's ex perspective, and so we think like, oh, the Betans are the good guys, and the Barry Yarns are the bad guys. And the novel does a really good job of showing that that's not the case. But it went on for a little too long for me. There was that whole subplot with the therapist and then Cordelia getting off of Beta Colony and the book just felt kind of disjointed at that point. I did like it. I liked it a lot more than the past few books I've read and yeah, it was good. I just um, was a little disappointed with the last third. So some other thoughts. At one point in the book, when they're first getting to know each other, um, Miles says something to Cordelia that I thought was really well articulated and I was having the same thought in that she's a super strong and courageous character without ever having really masculine traits. And I think that's so wonderful and revolutionary as a female character in a sci-fi novel in that she doesn't have to be gun-toting and badass to still be a badass because a lot of what she accomplishes is through words and through her charisma and through leadership because we really see her take control of the situation in a lot of places and she has really um, climbed her way to the top in the Baden hierarchy and so we know that she has those skills because she is a commander and she really gets to exercise those skills and I thought that was really well done because I love female characters who their strengths are female 
and not masculine. That can be cool sometimes, but I think um, that's kind of the Joss Whedon style of good female characters and that they're just like fighting all the time. And I don't really identify with fighting female characters. I never have. I always feel better represented by female characters that are smart. I like using my brain. I'm not much of a jock, and so it's really cool to see a character like Cordelia. And I know that the series didn't follow her as much as it follows her son, but I do want to read more with her because she's awesome. So since I already did my sort of vlog in reading this book, and since it's been a while since I've read it, I don't really have more to say, just that I liked it. I think I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads. There are the sort of problematic rape aspects that I talked about, and um, on further consideration, in the moment I said that um, the sexual assault scene was pretty well handled, but I, I read something online that really kind of changed my mind and that sexual assault should never be a plot point. It shouldn't happen on screen. Kind of like, um, I don't like seeing sexism or racism happen in fantasy books because, well, you don't have to have that happen. You're making up the world yourself. It's not our world. So I can really see people or myself not liking that scene in particular. I thought if it had to be there, it was well done. So I do appreciate it for that but not as bad as it could have been, it's kind of a low bar. So I'm not sure what I'll be reading next. I don't want to promise anything because I don't know what's going to happen in my reading life. I might actually start a series where I talk about what I'm currently reading because I'm usually reading like four books at once and that will be a wild ride. But I like the reading vlog format, so I might do that again. But you will find out here, folks. So thanks for watching.